This episode was a big one. We finally finished the bloom in the 944, which is absolutely insane. It looks crazy. We follow a step-by-step -step procedure using the HP Academy method, and boy oh boy, did it turn out good. Be sure to stick around for the whole thing. The results are absolutely crazy. Without further ado, let's get stuck into it. We've got a pretty big week. Uh, this week we've got planned uh, basically cleaning the engine harness up completely, wrapping it, heat shrinking it, you know the deal, making it look nice. Everything's pretty much working. The temperature side of my oil pressure slash temp sensors somehow not working. I've got to figure that out. Uh, we also got to figure out the rev gauge as well, the taco, but other than that, everything is working as expected. This week, we're also going to make a very, very simple intake. Uh, I've got to put my intake air temperature sensor in, uh, which is super easy. It won't take long. Uh, further to that, we also need to rip out pretty much a whole flex fuel harness and clean it up, shorten it, make a Deutsch plug that connects to the ECU so it's quick and easy for serviceability. All right, first harness is out. I mark where the grommet is, just there. So what we're gonna do is twist it together and then we're gonna use just single wall heat shrink from the pins to basically where the grommet sits and the rest we're just gonna use some fleece tape. I'm gonna put a Deutsch plug on the other end to connect it to the ECU as well. All twisted together, looking really nice. Um, I've got this side with heat shrink, which is the external part. And then for the interior part, we're just gonna run some fleece tape just wrapped around nicely. I 100% could have done the twist a bit tighter, but I think for my first go, it actually turned out really nice. Big smile on my face, that's for sure. We I'm gonna chuck it back in the car uh, and then we can put the Deutsch plug on the opposite end. Pass it through, the cable is just here now. I've tucked it all properly. So we're gonna have to add two Deutsch plugs, right? One that connects the Lambda sensor to the car harness and also another one that connects the ECU to the car harness. You might be thinking, why two Deutsch plugs? Why not just one? We're gonna run two. So one, we can disconnect the Lambda sensor completely, right? And the other one is gonna be a disconnect from the ECU to the harness. Now, the reason why we're gonna do that is so we can unplug it, right? And take the whole engine harness out without needing to de-pin anything. So that's pretty important. So when you're building a harness, a bit of forward planning when it comes to, you know, unplugging stuff and de-pinning is, uh, it's quite vital. So you don't need to de-pin things when you wanna take things out. We have some pretty cool mid-video news. We've just partnered with High Performance Academy. Now, if any of you guys know what it is, you'll understand how exciting um, this partnership's gonna be. It basically means that I'm gonna learn how to do things the right way the first time and save myself from mucking up and doing things wrong. This stuff here, which is the self-closing wrap, is actually really good stuff to use but I didn't know how to use it properly. So now that I do know how to use it, we're gonna be wrapping the loom fully in that stuff, but doing it the right way. Another bit arrived. We've got our intake. We've got a 90 degree three inch intake uh, pipe that we're gonna cut down, fabricate, and, and also apply the weld on bung for the air intake sensor. So we're gonna do that today. Once that's done, we can then just fix all our branching up using the right tape, high temp tape, and then take the loom out and wrap it all. We're obviously gonna have to cut this down. I have a pretty good idea on how I want this to sit. Just as short as possible, cut, cut the other end down and just have a simple pod filter. Eventually, we'll build a nice big intake that actually works properly and keeps the, the air intake uh, temp down. But for now, this is what it's gonna be until we design it properly. Um, High Performance Academy actually offer a CAD course, so I might have a look through that and see if we can you know, 3D print something or even get something machined up to make it look absolutely mint. But for now, we're just gonna make a quick hot air intake uh, just to get the car started, get it on the dyno and that sort of thing.
just finished up welding. I'm gonna say I did a pretty good job. I haven't welded aluminium in probably a year, at a minimum, right? Uh, so I'm gonna take that, it actually looks all right. Just brush it up with some scotch Bright and go from there. Just need to let it cool down before we can figure out where we're gonna put this air intake um, temp sensor. Just finished configuring the air intake sensor. It's all working as expected. So what we're gonna do now is take the loom out, just make sure we're happy with the branches uh, all 100% before we take it out, of course. Uh, and then we're gonna replace all our crappy branch tape with capped on tape. HP Academy suggests to use it. It's like a high temp, uh, basically electrical tape, and it looks really cool. So I'm just gonna quickly go over and double check and make sure I'm happy with how all the branches are sitting. And if not, just make a little bit of an adjustment with crap electrical tape for now. And then we'll undo it all and use some capped on tape like I mentioned. Loom out. Let's clean the workbench, what a mess. I've gotta clean this up so we can have the loom sit on the bench and then we can see what we're working with. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna measure all the branch points, um, write it all down properly, because we're gonna to have to twist all the can cables together. You gotta to twist them as tight as possible um, just to stop the noise. So I'll get these measurements down, um, just make sure I've got it all done properly. We're gonna make sure that the shielded cable for the crank angle sensor is gonna be dead in the middle of the harness. We're not gonna twist it around. Um, it's not needed for this harness. Uh, the higher level harnesses, for example, like a motorsport harness, yes, absolutely. And it requires a lot more planning. For our level, um, we're just gonna try and keep it central um, for the sheathing. So let's get started. Uh, start writing everything down, all the measurements. out roughly the harness very very simple right we got our ECU 200 mil in I should actually mark that so 200 mil in we got two DT plugs which are these two here um, 550 total from here to here I should also mark that down right firewall now 70 70 mil in we've got our first two branches so we got our injector branch and our branch for two DT plugs and the fuel pressure sensor. So I've just written that there. So 200 mil from the next branch to the firewall, right? So from here to here, we've got our next branch, which is the ref sensor. And then we've got our can bus for the can lambda. And then the rest is pretty easy. 600 mil across, and then it branches out for all the other sensors. You're meant to do this before you do the harness. Take a good note of that. I stuffed it up, but at the end of the day, I needed to learn, and this was the best way to do it. So I'm pretty nervous, but what I'm gonna do now is take apart the harness completely. So I'm gonna take all the tape off um, and then see what we're working with. So I just finished my first ever like braided wire. So this is for the can. You're meant to twist the opposite wires together. So I've also done it for inside the cabin. It looks so cool. Normally you do this beforehand, uh, but obviously we, we didn't. I was dumb enough not to, but that does look awesome. So massive jump up. I've also wrapped it in some of that special tape there and it's turned out really nice. As you can see, we've made some awesome progress, right? Now, I am already seeing some very small issues, right, from not planning and doing things properly. I'll give you an example. Extra wire here, extra wire here. Like these are both, you know, little, little mistakes, but when you're trying to do things like properly, simple things like that ruin it. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. I'll probably just trim back the wire and, and, and fix it that way. But 
it's just something for, for you guys to know, right? Like, I can't stress enough how great this uh, HP Academy uh, course is, you know? It, it minimizes mistakes because it teaches you things properly, right? Uh, the first time, not, you know, after you've made three or four mistakes and you need to do it twice over. So I'll continue with this harness, right? We'll continue using the right tape um, to finish off all the branches and then from there we can start sleeving it. Look how much better this looks. Holy moly, this is done properly. So now that we're happy with the branches, it's time to put some sleeving on. The sleeving that I have, it's sort of see-through, so I'm gonna wrap it in just like an underbody chemical resistant tape before we put the sleeving on top, just so it's completely black. Now, HP Academy don't do this, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. A little bit more protection, and like I just said, just to hide the cables underneath the color. Holy moly, this looks cool. We're almost there. Now, obviously when you build a proper loom uh, and you know what you're doing, you do all the pinning last after you put all the sheathing on. But unfortunately for us, that wasn't the option uh, just because we had so much to figure out in terms of the ignition system. And obviously I'm a novice when it comes to this. Photos of every single plug, de-pin everything, have everything neatly labeled. And then we're going to finish the wrap and then put the sheathing on. First branch, that looks awesome. That's crazy nice. Getting there. Slowly coming together. Main branch point looks good. It's super solid, so super durable, which is what you want. Whole harness, wrapped, heat shrinked. Amazing. This looks so, so good. I have some compact heat sleeve, which I'm gonna be putting on this part here which goes to the oil temp sensor because it's actually run through, even the factory variant, run through there. So just having a bit more heat protection for that. And then I'm gonna start putting all the plugs on and see how it turns out. Two days later. Finally, the harness fully wrapped, fully pinned, ready to go. Look how nice it's turned out. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. Now, obviously I couldn't have done this without the great learning and advice through Horsepower Academy. Uh, they've taught me so much, like I said, in such a short period of time, and I've turned my harness from looking like absolute crap to perfection almost, right? How cool is that? This is, this is unbelievable. I can't wait to put it in the car and see if uh, everything's still working. I'm sure it will be, but you know, Sometimes, sometimes things go wrong, but this looks unreal. Bang. All in now, I've actually put the fuel rail in with the new injectors just to make sure everything fits. Now, the injector side's a little bit tight, but it will be okay because we've got a new fuel rail that's gonna minimize all this. So all the wiring will sort of be flush, if that makes sense at all, which it doesn't. Oh my God, it's so cool seeing it in the car. Um, everything looks pretty good. You know, little errors here and there. This is probably a little bit too tight for my liking, but once everything's bolted up, it'd be perfect. Remember, 
that we're trying to hide everything. So it needs to be a bit tighter um, so we can put it in the spot we need to. So it looks like there's no harness, really. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just gonna turn the car on, go through all the, the settings, make sure everything's working as expected. Um, I think I've got a faulty sensor. I've been speaking to the boys at Link. We definitely have an issue with the oil pressure slash temp sensor in one unit. So I think I'm gonna have to get another one sent out. But other than that, all the sensors are working, which is awesome. Ethanol sensor active. This guy's working and the can gauge is working. So that means the majority of the harness is working. Now, the last step is obviously to try and start the car. The moment we've all been waiting for, the moment I've been waiting for, and the moment I'm so scared of. Now, I do have a little surprise for you guys. I have ordered a camshaft out of America. Uh, we're gonna cam this thing, which is gonna be pretty cool. We're waiting on the cam and we're waiting on the fuel rail from the same place. Um, it should have been here like two weeks ago, but I'm still waiting for it. Long story short, we're gonna have to try and start the car with the old fuel rail. I don't see it as a problem. We're just gonna have to make some dummy fuel lines for now, um, just to connect it. There'll be two pressure regs, which doesn't make sense, but it's the only thing we can do until the new fuel rail arrives. In terms of issues we have at the moment with the harness, um, just that pressure sensor, like I was saying, other than that, I think everything's working. We do need to try and start the car before it heads off because we've got to check that there's no fuel leaks, there's oil in the thing and obviously coolant. Really, really exciting stuff. So thank you all for watching if you stayed and stuck around uh, this long. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe already and like the video. It means the world if you do. Um, and I really, really appreciate the support. So sick we have HP Academy on board. I can't wait to utilize their courses. You get 55% off any course on HP Academy. That's a lot. You also get $300 off the VIP package using my codes. Link is down below in the description. They have everything from engine building to building harnesses. I used their course when we wrapped the loom and it turned out schmick. So we'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we can fire this bad boy up.